Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Let's get it. <laughs>
off of this movie off top for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whew. Those ten rings though, they're OP, like I said. Uh Shang Chi's dad, I don't, I don't even remember his name, but his dad has them for a thousand years. It's it's kept him and gave him eternal life, ultimate power. And you see that throughout the movie. There's a lot of flashbacks, a lot of history building. And he's OP. They're OP, bro. Ultimate power. Ten rings. And we get to see Shang-Chi use the ten rings, too. They have a battle, him and his dad. And they ended up, ended up splitting them between the two. And they had a pretty dope fight with them. What was interesting throughout the movie, it's, it's like a father-son movie. And then during the movie, you realize there's a daughter and a sister. And they show a couple of scenes where she's just being ignored. <laughs> and that's basically how it is in the movie. And even in the trailers, like sh there's a sister and a daughter, not just Shang-Chi. And there's a there's a scene where the dad is training Shang-Chi. And the sisters, they're j he's just not letting her train. He doesn't want her to to learn with the rest of the group. She reminds him too much of his dead wife. And... They don't really force the, you know, the women thing, but they show that scene. It reminded me of the scene from Wonder Woman when uh, young Diana was watching all the the females train and she wasn't allowed to. It was the same, literally almost the same scene. And then she starts doing training by herself, doing what uh, she saw everybody else do. And that's how she learns how to fight. But, no, you know, it's pretty similar to the Wonder Woman scene. I'm not going to lie. So I thought that was tight. I mean, a little copy and paste there, but it was cool. And then Abomination vs. Wong. <laughs> We've been waiting to see the scene. They were basically just friends. Wong and Abomination were just friends. They were just fighting for money, I guess. Because, you know, Wong in Infinity War, he didn't have any money to get a sandwich. So Doctor Strange had to cover him. So shit like that. I'm pretty sure that's why he was out here doing these fights. Maybe trying to gather intel from all the random people at the fight, fighting ring. Yeah, they were just friends. They were pretend fighting, basically. And uh, then Abomination leaves with Wong, so, you know. <laughs> it didn't really go any anywhere further than that. There's some end credit scenes. I'd say the second one isn't necessary to stay for. But of course, you're going to stay, stay for the second credit, end credit scene. There's no point to not watching it, I guess. So I'm not even going to say it's pointless because at the end of the day, you're going to stay until the absolute end no matter what. That's just how Marvel movies are these days. Comic book movies even. The first end credit scene though was pretty tight. And it was actually pretty uh pretty massive what they did. I'm not going to lie. They they did, they did dropped a big bomb in that in that end credit scene. Not, not only did they bring Katie, uh, Aquafina, and Shang-Chi into the MCU officially walking them walking in, in the to the avengers basically they showed bruce banner not as the hulk not as professor hulk but as bruce banner with a broken arm <laughs> so they must have either split i think the fact that he has a broken arm makes me think that they split they split like the whole there's probably an actual hulk now and bruce banner is just bruce banner because how could he have a broken arm? Unless they they just did that for no reason. And I don't know. That's weird. But they showed Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel with longer hair. And they showed them as holograms talking to Wong at the Sanctorium. They were studying the Ten Rings. They Wong tells them they they have no knowledge of the Ten Rings. And that it actually sent a message out. I don't know if he was saying in the space or just it sent a message. It was a, it was a beacon. So something's coming, essentially, because of the Ten Rings. And it was only because Shang-Chi used them. Once Shang-Chi used them, then it sent out a, a beacon message, I guess. Because when his dad was using them for a thousand, over a thousand years, it never sent a message. But hey, that's how we're, they're connecting them. They're brought in. Wong even tells them the rest of your lives are about to change forever. Go home, get some sleep. You in here now. <laughs> you in here, dog. That's what that's basically how that went down. And yeah, the the fight between the father and son was actually pretty emotional. It was emotional, you know, the losing his mom and how he had to deal with all that. 
and the sister. Oh yeah, the second end credit scene with the sister. She took over uh, the Ten Rings. She took over her dad's empire. That's basically all she ever wanted was to be a part of the empire. She took over the empire. For a split second, you think that they're actually going some like uh, feminism woke shit. It shows all women training, but then it pans out. It's just there was just like a section of women and then a section of men. So for a split second, I was like, oh, damn. And then after that, I was like, oh, okay. It's equal. She made it to where it was equal, which was tight. I was like, okay, whatever. She took over the Ten Rings. She has men and women fighting, and she brought in some of her uh, underground fight ring buddies. I hope I don't know if she's gonna be straight up evil, or. I mean that organization was evil in general, but I don't know if she's gonna turn it to use for better or for worse. We'll see what happens. That's pretty much it. This movie was tight. Uh, see me, you, Lou. However you say his name, he did a great job. Him and Aquafina were a great pair. Action was tight. It was actually funny, and it wasn't corny funny it wasn't funny at unnecessary times movie's colorful bright nice i actually want to watch it again it's pretty fun i want to watch those action scenes again and i think they blended uh flashbacks and current present day pretty well so all in all i'll give this a b <laughs> i give this a b bro and it could have been a b plus if it wasn't for ben kingsley bro it could have been a b plus he's funny but I just do not like him. I don't like that character. It was it was too much in Iron Man three, and it was way too much in this movie, way too much. I could have dealt straight up without that. I already said what I said about him. Like he could they could have got rid of him at the, the gates of uh. The other dimension, whatever the frick that place was called, they could have left him there, and I'm like, all right, that's solid, cool, we done. But no, they had to bring him over there. And yeah, that's that's about it for the movie. If next time I'm live and we talk some topics, we could talk about Shang uh Shang Chi some more there. But for now, I'm just a guy with a camera and a mic. And I'm out. I don't see nothing wrong. I don't see nothing wrong. Just a little subscribe. Subscribe is my I don't see nothing wrong. Go ahead and hit that like button. Oh, you know I like that. Oh, now you better hit subscribe. Oh, bitch, you gonna die.